In this video, I'm going to remove the rear tire and install a new inner tube on this Mototech dirt bike. I'm going to go through some tips and tricks and the tools you'll need to do so. A link to those are above and also in the description. Now, one thing I suggest is if the rear tire is about half worn and the inner tube isn't holding air, just buy the entire assembly. That way you can remove the old one and put the new one in. The price difference is only about $25 to $30. Now, the front tire is the same procedure. But it's a little bit easier because the wheel diameter is bigger and the tire is a little bit more pliable. Before we get started, I hope that you like this video. Subscribe to my channel and let's get started. To remove the rear tire on the Mototech, you're going to need a 17 millimeter socket or wrench on this side, a 14 millimeter socket or wrench on that side, and then you're going to have to loosen the bolt to slide the axle out. All right, I got the bolts loosened. I'm going to remove the chain from the sprocket now. I'm just going to set it down here, and then I'm going to pull the axle bolt out so that I can remove the rear tire. I got the rear wheel off the bike. I'm going to remove this rear brake rotor using a 5 millimeter hex so that I can easily access removing the tire with tire spoons and not be impeded by the brake rotor. This rear tire has a very stiff sidewalls and at 10 inches it makes it difficult. The front tire is probably a lot easier to remove, but this one's definitely gonna require some tire spoons. A link to those tire spoons are above and also in the description. You're gonna simply slide them in here and then pop the bead off. You might need two or three tire spoons to really get that bead off, and then we'll worry about getting the tire back on. All right, this sidewall was really tough to break. I finally broke it. You can see here I put a lot of soapy water. I used two tire spoons and those tire rim protectors. Finally popped the bead off. Now I'm going to work it around and get the tire off the rim. I finally got the tire off. That was a real bear. Now I have the new tube. I slightly inflated it just enough to give it some shape. What I'm going to do is put the new tube inside the tire and then get the one side of the bead onto the rim. The hardest part will be getting the second bead over the wheel and onto that rim. It's definitely a very stiff sidewall. I got the new tube tucked in nicely into the tire. I'm going to get ready to put it on the wheel. I'm going to spray a bunch of water around that and also on the other side of the tire so that it'll help me slide the bead over the wheel. So I put a little air in the tube and I tucked it into the tire and I have the valve stem out. I got these specific tubes. I use these on my razors. It's nice because it has a bent nozzle so it's easier to inflate. I'm going to point the nozzle away from the sprocket. So first thing I'm going to do is put the nozzle into the wheel. All right, got that in there. And I'm going to put my valve stem cap on there. <clears throat> I'm going to put the valve stem cap on here so that it won't slide back out of the wheel. All right. So I got that ready to get mounted on the wheel. I got my tire spoons here. I got soapy water. I'm gonna spray down the wheel. Gotta get both sides. So it'll help slip on and I'm not fighting all that friction. And then what I wanna do, keep that tube tucked in there. Try to at least get the one side of the bead on. Then worry about the second part. Helps too if it's a warmer day, the tire might be a little more pliable. To help keep the tire on the wheel while you're pressing on it, I use these Velcro straps. You can also use a zip tie, but I simply put this through to one side of the nozzle and then slide this around. and cinch this down nice and tight. That way it holds the tire 
against the wheel in this direction so that when you're pushing over here you're not fighting over there it really helps the situation put a little more water could still dry out take my tire spoon with the little flange I'm gonna catch the inside flange here so that I can pull the tire on there what you might need to do is start over here and just do a little bit like that got that on there sometimes I might actually go and put a strap on here now to help me so that I'm not fighting because as soon as I go over here it might pop over there and then you're constantly moving around it's kind of annoying in my opinion okay I'm slowly working it around almost got it I have just this little bit left right here to get the one side of the bead on side of the bead onto the wheel you can see here Oosh. so now what I'm gonna do is get this pushed down so that this side of the bead is in the furthest or smallest diameter that way it'll make it easy to push the other bead on I also want to make sure that I tuck the tube into the wheel it'll help prevent it from pinching so that's what I'm doing now Tucking that into the wheel. There. See how now the bead is flush on this side, it's in that trough. I might reuse these. I finally get the other side. Add a bunch of lube in here. Soapy water is nice because it'll you just rinse it off when you're done. And there's no mess like grease. Okay. So I'll start here with the valve stem again. Should be pretty easy to push on. velcro straps on here and there that way I can work on their the last bit of the wheel all right here in the home stretch got the velcro straps on for this side of the bead and just slowly work the bead around don't use too much force because had this happen with my razors end up popping the tube and then it's super frustrating because you're like 90% the way there I got it mounted it wasn't pretty I had to have a friend come help me what I did was I put it on here like this 
he actually stood on there. I had to have one tire spoon here, here, and another one in the middle, kind of like this. And I pulled the two outer ones up, got that seated, and then this one I had to pull from this direction and pop it over. It was a real chore to get that done, but it's definitely doable. Now that I got the tire mounted, I'm going to make sure that it holds air. I'm going to inflate it. All right, tire inflated nicely. I do like this gooseneck valve stem. It's going to be much easier to inflate than the stock one. And I'm going to reinstall the rotor. Ready to install this wheel. All right, I'm going to engage the chain onto the sprocket a little bit. And then I'm going to slide this the wheel up and engage it with the brake rotor. Remember that the small spacer goes on this side, the longer spacer on the other side. I'm gonna first get this started. Just slide that in there just slightly. And then I'm gonna get this spacer on there. All right. Make sure that your chain is on the other side of the axle. Don't slide it quite through to the other side because you're going to need to put that spacer on. So get that spacer engaged. All right. And then this washer and nut go on the other side. Put that on finger tight. I'm gonna make sure that I can get the chain on. So we'll slide the wheel up to try to engage the chain. All right, I got the chain on. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is get that chain aligned pretty well. Start tightening the rear axle. I get that wheel looks about like that. Also with the brake caliper. Hold this. Snug this up. Make sure everything is looking okay. Alright. Hold this again, get this. All right, I'm gonna put some oil on the chain. I'm gonna get this brake adjusted so it's not rubbing. I'm gonna reinstall the chain guard using the four millimeter screws. I hope that you like this video. Subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments. Thanks for watching.